All right, so let's uh, let's get started. I apologize if I have to uh, get distracted because I'm doing the waiting room here. Like when people when people uh, come in, I have to let them in. Um, so if anyone has any questions, as always, feel free to shout out or type a text on the side. We're starting from we're in Derech Hashem. We're in the second section in this beginning of the second chapter. And if you have the name and edition which we use, it's page one seventy five. And today, we're going to be learning about Hashem's Hashkacha and Divine Providence, how He uh, watches over everything we do, and how reward and punishment works. And everything is going to be um, built on what we learned previously, but we'll go over that, so no need to worry if this is your first time coming. So, we learned in the first section that Hashem created the world, Hashem is a being which is totally good, and being that being, he wants to do good for all of him. All he wants to do good. A person who is good, a person, a being that is good, does good. So Hashem created a world where he can bestow the ultimate goodness on a, on a creation. Now, how? What is the ultimate goodness that could be received? So the ultimate goodness is if a person, a being, earns that goodness himself. Right? Hashem could have just created a bunch of robots and gave these robots goodness, but that isn't the ultimate good. The ultimate good is having a being acquire it for himself. Now the reason is, a few reasons, is because when a being acquires it himself, he makes himself shalim, he makes himself complete. And when a person is complete, he's similar to Hashem. When a person is similar to Hashem, he can cleave to Hashem. And since Hashem is the ultimate good, that means to for a, for a being to get that ultimate goodness, they have to be similar as similar to Hashem as possible. So the way a being becomes as similar to Hashem as possible to get close to Hashem is by acquiring that goodness himself. Also, when you give somebody a gift, it's a little bit embarrassing. Versus if someone acquires something for himself, he works for it himself, he is not embarrassed. That's called Namadi Kisufa. So we learned in the first section, that what is the being that Hashem created to bestow goodness? That's humanity, mankind. Mankind is the being that Hashem wanted to bestow goodness upon. And that means that we're the main part of creation. And that means that the human being is the one who has to acquire that goodness for himself. Now, how do we acquire that goodness? That means we have to have free will. That we were put in a world that has good, and has evil, and we have to choose to do good. We also have a Yetzir Tov and a Yetzir We have a drive to do good and a drive to do evil, which is constantly fighting. And we have Bechir, we have free will. We have free will to either serve Hashem and become similar to Hashem, or to reject that and do what we want to do and reject Hashem, and we won't be similar to Hashem, and we won't get that goodness. So since that's, Hashem, that's, since that's how God decided to make the world, so that means He's got to watch over us, and He has to deal with us on a daily basis in that way. Right? Once Hashem made that the purpose of creation is to do good to human beings, and the way human beings get that good is by acquiring it themselves, that means Hashem has to repay us based on what we do, based on our actions. So we're going to learn in this section how that works exactly. And we're going to learn not only... So, so far I just explained what it's the purpose of life for an individual, right? An individual's job in this world is to choose to do good through his free will, to become similar to Hashem, to be a... Shalem, a complete person, and in the next world, he'll get his reward. We're also going to see that it's not only a job for an individual, but there is a job for humanity as a whole. So there's a goal for an individual, and there's also a goal for humanity, meaning it could, it could have been that God put each of us in the world, and we have to do what we have to do, and we're all individuals, and we have no connection to each other. Right? It would be like, you know, God puts us in, like, Donkey Kong, and if you get the most points at the end, then you go to Olam Haba. You know, whoever gets the most points gets a better position in Olam Haba. But that's not how God made the world. He also made it that there is a goal 
for humanity and world history as a whole, which we're going to learn. Uh, which, well, I mean, we kind of touched on that earlier. That is Olam Haba, the next world. Now, the Ramchal and all the Mikubalim hold that when we say Olam Haba, the next world, that doesn't exist yet. Olam Haba is in the world we're in now. First, we're going to have Mashiach come before the world, six, before the year 6000. We're all going to return to Eretz Yisrael. And then there's going to be Tchias HaMesim. I mean, everyone who passed away who is worthy is going to come back to life. And then Hashem is going to destroy this world and recreate it in a more spiritual plane where we can get the reward that we earned here in, uh, in Olam Haza, in this world. And that's Olam Haba. Now, when people die now and they go to what we say, they go to heaven, that isn't Olam Haba, that's called Olam Hanashamas. That's something else. But according to the Ramchal and the Mikubalim, the Olam Haba is, this world is going to be destroyed and recreated where we're going to get our reward. Okay, so let's uh, let's begin page one seventy five. Hine kvar higdamnu heyos tachlas brias hamin hanoshi l'sheyiskev yagiel atov hamiti. We already explained earlier that the purpose of man is that he should acquire and be in merit to get the true good. Shehu ha'istab kuzbo yisbarach olam haba. That is cleaving to Hashem and olam haba. The ultimate reward is to be close to God in the next world. So the ultimate reward is not for now when we're in physical bodies. But rather, after this Tchia Semesim and the world is recreated, that's where we get our ultimate reward. And that's by being similar to Hashem, by acquiring perfection, we'll be similar to Hashem in a certain respect, and we'll be closer, we'll be close to Hashem. Does someone have a question? No, it's feedback. Okay. Venimsa, Shesov Kal Kilgulov, Hinei Hu HaMenuch HaLolom Haba, the end of everything, the end of uh, everything that happens in this world, is Olam Haba. Right, everything that's going on in world history, all the current events, right, the Biden-Trump election, everything going on in the world, it's all going to the point that the world should be perfected and that we should get to Olam Haba. Omnum, Gazra Chachmel Yaina, Heyos Roy Venos, Hashem saw that it was fitting, Sheyikdim Lazem at Savu Olam Haza. Before we get to Olam Haba, we need to have this world. Niksha Venigbal Bechukos Teva Olam, that we have with our uh, reality and our um, physical laws that apply. This world is the way which we get to the goal of Olam Haba. Like we mentioned, in this world, we do mitzvos and we have free will so that we hopefully choose to do the right thing so that we can acquire the reward in Olam Haba. According to this principle, and the whole world is based on this principle. We are right. We also mentioned earlier in the last section that since the goal, Hashem's goal, was to bestow goodness on a certain creation, which is man, everything in the world was created for man. The animals were created for us. The angels were created for us. Everything that exists was created for mankind, humans. Right. That's why, from a Jewish perspective. It's, we mentioned this also, it's totally illogical to say that it's immoral to eat an animal, right? We, that's not something we believe in. Um, right? we're, not, we're not supposed to mistreat animals because we don't want to develop bad character traits of, um, of being a vicious person. So you shouldn't treat animals viciously, we have to treat them respectfully. But all the animals and everything else in the world is here for our use. Because mankind, we're, this is a very uh, egocentric way to look at the world, but it's the correct way. Mankind is the... Purpose of existence. And this world is all a preparation for the world to come. Okay, base. But this preparation is built on two axes. The first one is personal, and the second is in a communal sense in general. So there's a goal for each human being and there's a goal for humanity as a whole. Ha'ishi who inyan kinis adam eshle musa b'masav. The personal personal level is that each individual should acquire perfection for himself. The haklali and the general one is who he's konin hamin anoshi b'chlal olam haba. That mankind as a whole should be prepared in olam haba. Now he, he the Ramchal talks a lot more about this in the um, in, in Das Tfunos that when the world recognizes that there is one Hashem, Yichud Hashem, that there's one God, that's when Mashiach will come. Oops, let me just 
when the uh, when um, sorry, I always get distracted when someone comes in. I lose my train of thought. But uh, right, so the the Ramchal and Das Tvinus writes that when that that the goal of humanity is that everyone should recognize that Hashem is one, right? We say at the end of Aleinu Vahaya, Vayom Ha'iyeh Hashem Echad Ushmo Echad, on that day, Hashem will be one and His name will be one. That's the goal of humanity, that evil should be eradicated, and evil is eradicated when we recognize that God is one. So we have an individual goal, that each individual personally we should acquire Shlemus, and also, as mankind, that mankind human beings as a whole should acquire perfection and that all of humanity should become good and acquire shlemus. I see there's a question here. So someone wants to know, how are species which haven't been discovered, how is that serving mankind? So we don't know, exa- well, I don't know for sure, exactly why each species um, is created for us. But it definitely is. Now, it could be an undiscovered species is part of an ecosystem which has to exist. Um, You know, and if that ecosystem didn't exist, then we wouldn't have food. That's a possibility. And that we're just not aware of how the undiscovered species interacts. It could be that for all we know, maybe the, you know, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia exists just so that we could go scuba diving and be inspired by the beauty of nature and come to love Hashem. So it could be every time a new, you know, interesting species is discovered, that's just for us to realize the wondrous miracles of Hashem. That's also possible. Um, Just throwing out possibilities, but exactly why each species, specifically undiscovered species, um, exist, that uh, that I don't know. But those are just some things that I thought of off the top of my head that could be. Okay, so we have these two... Uh, these two, these two axes, these two axes. We have the personal goal and the communal goal. So each individual should acquire shlemus perfection, and the community, the global community, should also acquire perfection. The explanation of this is that humanity was created with a good inclination and an evil inclination, and free will. This is a uh, tenet of Judaism that we have free will, we have choice. We don't believe that you know, we were raised a certain way and therefore we can't choose. Obviously a person's upbringing and other factors impact how he chooses and uh, you know, makes it harder or easier in certain situ- situations. But in the end of the day, we have free will. We can, we can make a choice. So since we have free will, that doesn't prevent, that means that there can be good and there can be evil. Meaning some people will have good in them, some people will have evil of them. The sofa gilgold, Sarah But since we mentioned that the goal of humanity is that humanity as a whole should become complete, that means the bad people have to be cast aside. And the good people will be gathered together in one group. And that and that group of good people will merit Olam Haba. So since people have free will, what's going to happen? It means there's going to be evil people in the world, that there are going to be people that do evil things. People are going to suffer. There's going to be people that are selfish, that take advantage of other people, that steal, that murder. And these people, they don't merit to get an Olam Haba, right? Not everybody who exists merits to be in the next world, right? There's a Mishnah that says, Kol Yisrael yish lahem olam haba. Every Jewish person has a portion in the next world, except, and then it lists a bunch of exceptions. For example, uh, heretics, things like that, uh, the generation of the flood, uh, the generation of, uh, forgot the Mishnah, forgot the other parts. But, um, right, and non-Jews also can get a part in the Olam Haba if they do, uh, they do certain mitzvahs. But the idea is that... In Olam Haba, it's going to be only the good people. So the bad people who, through their th- uh, through their free will, came to that, they will be cast aside. Okay. Anyone? Anyone have any questions to this point? Clarifications? Okay. Let's go a little further. Let's do Gimel. This is what we said that the free will in humanity, Leos Tovim Urayim, to be that they can be good or evil. Or some of them good is some of them evil, right? Everyone has free will, so it's possible that everybody could be good. It's possible that everyone could be bad. Or that some could be good and some could be bad. 
who atzma machriya rechav shar zeh gam kemi maisa kol ish meishe yamin. But that's not only in all of humanity as a whole, but in each individual. Sheulam efshe sheikulam tovim ukulam roim. A person could be totally good or totally evil. Or he could be partially good or partially evil, right? Most of us, we're a combination. We do good things and we do bad things. And I know everyone here in the room does mostly good things that I can testify to. And this prevents the perfected beings which we mentioned. Because we could find already in one person good things and bad things, right? How can we have a Olam Haba of all good people, and everything is good, who are totally shalim, if even each individual has bad things with them. We've all sinned, we've all done bad things. Now, so what will you say? Okay, well, Hashem should, um, you know, even if a person, let's say a person has mostly good deeds. Okay, Hashem should forget about the bad things he did. No, that's not just. That doesn't, that is not justice. Justice means that everything we do has to be looked at. And we mentioned, why Why does it have to be like that? Because Hashem wants us to earn our shlemus by ourselves. We have to be the ones that earn it. And we could only earn it if Hashem judges us for the good and the bad. If Hashem would just ignore us, ignore the bad things we do, um, that would mean that that's not just. And that He's giving us a gift by ignoring those bad things we do. Now, just a disclaimer, that doesn't mean Hashem is some, you know, God forbid, vindictive being that is like looking out every bad thing we do. That just means he doesn't ignore the bad things. But however, he gave us gifts. He gave us repentance, right? Repentance, we can erase the bad deeds we, we did um, through suffering that we undergo in our lives. That erases bad deeds. And even mer merciful, Hashem is merciful, even within those bad deeds. Maybe Hashem knows what we were thinking. We weren't trying to rebel against him. Our Yetzirah got the best of us. You know, uh, he knows what's in our minds. He's not going to punish as harshly as he would someone who did it with rebellious intent. So there's a lot of mercy built into the system, but Hashem just doesn't uh, ignore totally the bad things we did. For justice to be fulfilled, all of our deeds have to be rewarded. Whether they're big or small, whether they're big or little. Therefore, Hashem made different periods of being rewarded and punished. Whether it's Reward or punishment. Two separate times in two places. What is this? Hashem divides our actions into the majority and the minority. And the majority will be judged in a certain place, and the minority will be judged in a certain place. Now let's just finish one more paragraph where he explains this idea. The main place of judgment is in the next world. Like we mentioned. And a person who merits to merits the um schar, merits the reward, he'll get his reward by cleaving to Hashem. And the punishment, someone who deserves punishment, he will not get any portion. In the next world, he will not get any portion of Olam Haba. Omnam, Hadin Le Lo Ye Ela Al Pirova Maisa. But this judgment will be based on the majority of a person's deeds. Ach Lemaisim Tovim Ashel Arash of Lemaisim Marayim Ashel Latzadikim Atzad Amiyug Yimatzay Olam Azeb Atzlachos of Atzaros of Shabo Yikabel Arash Gemul Miyud Hazachos Ashel Latzachos of Atzadik Onish of Anos of Yisurim Shabo BeOfen Shiyushlam Hamishpat Bakol. I'll translate in a second. Vishar Eni No Olam Haba Kmo Shiro Lematzav Ashel Mahu. So let's. But so you have. Let's take a tzaddik, for example. A righteous person. A righteous person means the majority of his deeds are mitzvos, are good deeds. But he still has a minority of his deeds, which are sins, right? Every Everybody sins. So how, do, so how does he get rewarded? So in the next world, he gets his reward by being close to Hashem, and he gets an infinite reward, spiritual pleasure, by being close to Hashem. But what about the minority of evil deeds he's done in his life, the minority of sins? So that gets repaid he gets punished in this world. In this world, a righteous person gets punished by suffering for those evil deeds he did. Now, what about a Russia, an evil person? Let's say most of his deeds are evil, but he's done a few good things. So in the next world, he gets nothing. He's totally obliterated. He gets no reward, nothing. He's punished. That's a horrible punishment. His neshama is gone. But in this world, he 
has to get rewarded for the few good deeds he did, so he'll be very successful. So it comes out that when a righteous person gets to Olam Haba, all of his evil deeds have been wiped out through his suffering in this world. And the Russia, the evil person, whatever few mitzvahs he did, he'll get rewarded in this world, and then he's totally gone. So the tzaddik has the ability to connect to Hashem totally without anything holding him back, because all of his sins were already paid back. And if you... And it's obvious from here, this also ans- this answers the question of tzaddik viralo, right? You see, we see, unfortunately, righteous people that suffer. So one of the reasons is, that's spoken out by many, is because even a righteous person has done many, uh, some bad deeds, right? What kind of, what human being is perfect? So, the tza- so Hashem punishes a, uh, the tzaddik for the few evil deeds he's done in this world, so that when he gets into Olam Haba, the next world, he has already paid his debts, and he can get the ultimate pleasure by being uh, by being close to Hashem. And uh, I think we'll stop here for today. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Thanks for coming. And uh, we'll continue with the same topic uh, next week. It's a very uh, intricate topic. Next week we'll talk about Gehenna, how that fits in. There's such a thing as hell, how that works. And uh, we'll learn how, uh, how Hashem deals with us based on our deeds and how we, we see that the way Hashem created the world, everything is exactly how it's meant to be, you know, to give humanity the ultimate uh, chance and the ultimate goodness in, in Olam Haba. So uh, wish everyone a great week and a great Shabbos. Thanks for coming. Oh.